Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, we were working on trying to sort out the temperature sensor so that the gauge would work. It was non-functional. And it turned out that there were just a couple of wires that were crossed. We did have the right wires. Two were crossed. And once we sorted that out and put them back in place, the temperature gauge works fine now. On to the next step, which is the twin electric fans. They were not coming on. Uh, I suspect I had a similar issue there with crossing over some wires. To determine that we've got the right wires going from the PCM, I wanted to use the continuity tester again to check to make sure that we have the correct wires for the low and the high speed fans. Now, again, looking at the information provided on LT1SWAP.com, the number 42 blue is the low speed fan, and the number 33 red is fan control number two. So, what I want to do is uh, from our pinout here, and our battery is disconnected. This is the red pinout. I'm going to turn the continuity tester on. And that was number 33 red. And number 33 red is this green wire. This prong right here. And let's see which wire it corresponds with over here on the fan relays. Okay, so we got that correct one. That's the low, uh, the uh, fan control number two. Now our low speed fan is blue number 42. And I've already taken the cover off of it, so it'd be easier to find. And 42 is this blue wire right here. And that should correspond to this one, which it does. So we know we got the, the low speed and the number two fan correctly wired as far as the connection and the trigger from the PCM. What I did do was reconfigure the additional power wire. There's a power and the ground is actually what comes from the PCM because that's what triggers the uh, triggers the relay, but it needs to have key on power. I've identified a wire over here on the side. I'm going to show you to show it to you here in just a moment. I will show you why I always say do not get rid of the OBS wiring until you get everything working. Okay, this is a cluster of wires that come out of the firewall from the old PCM on the OBS. I've cut them back, I've trimmed them back and thinned it out, but I have not eliminated them yet. And here's a good reason why. I need key on power and rather than trying to run a wire from the relays all the way over to this other side where the fuse panel is to get to these pink key on power, I wanted to find a power wire that would work that with an existing one that's in the OBS harness. This one was pink and I thought why not let's give it a try. First of all, circuit tester, I have it grounded right there. And when I touch this wire, nothing. Doesn't do anything. Okay, now let's turn the key on and see what it'll do. Okay, obviously before turning the key on, we reconnected the PCM and the battery so that it would be functional. Now when we use the test light to touch the wire, it's key on power. So that's where I'm going to connect the wires to the relay that require the key on power. Now at the end of the video, I will show you a diagram of exactly which prong or circuit of the relay each wire goes to so that you'll know exactly without any mixed terminology. Let's uh, connect the wire to that, start it, and let's see if the fans will come on. Fan number one just came on. Both fans are running. The temperatures are set to come on at 185 and 195. And that fixes problem number two. So now the temperature gauge works. And now the dual fans work as well. Next, we'll be tackling the AC. Now I just need to tidy up this fuse relay box over here that was for the fans. Put it back together and mount it back on the fender well there. And secure that wire that I uh, just twisted on there. I need to solder that connection and we'll use some of that marine heat shrink on it as well. I use the marine heat shrink on all the wiring 
because it has adhesive on the inside of the heat shrink as well, so it keeps any moisture out. Because of the environment under the hood of the truck, you don't want any moisture getting in there to corrode a connection that could lead to a failure in the future. So we'll get all that tidied up, put it back together, and move on to the AC and get it to work. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging with me this far. At the end, as I promised, I'll put a diagram of the relay and the, each uh, pin and what goes to that pin so that uh, maybe you don't have to do what I just did and kind of resort through it and make it work and get it the first time. Anyway, thanks for watching.